Hey guys, Sam here. Today I wanted to do a very quick video on hexagonal architecture in Golang. Um, just to quickly familiarize yourself with hexagonal architecture, um, here is a very quick screenshot. So the concept of hexagonal architecture is basically to decouple dependencies. So you have different adapters, right? So the first kind of adapter you can have are primary adapters. So a primary adapter could be a JSON API, it could be a UI, it could be a CLI. This is like the main kind of like user facing, if you like, part of your application. Um, you then have a port. So you have your, your main part of your application, which is your driving adapter. You have your core, which is your kind of business logic, which is kind of completely decoupled and dependency neutral from any other part of your application and then you have ports which your secondary adapters can then implement so your secondary adapters would be maybe like a database layer and um, it could be an sms uh, could be an email adapter like i've got on the screen here um, and, and essentially what, what we're trying to achieve here is we don't want to change any of our core application just if we want to change database provider you know so say we're using postgresql and then we, I don't know, business requirements change and we now need to use MongoDB um, or business wants to use a cheaper database, whatever, right? Whatever reason for them to be swapped out. Um, your application core should not change based on the fact you're having to change an adapter, right? So I basically put together a structure and go, this is opinionated, um, but we'll hop straight into it now, right? So I didn't code this on screen. I wanted to kind of do it and then kind of talk about it because I thought it'd be easier. Um, so we'll go over the initial structure first of all. So what I've got here is an internal directory. In this internal directory, I've actually kind of mapped out the hexagonal pattern itself, right? So I've got adapters and I've got a primary adapter. This primary adapter has a directory net called web, which is going to be a full stack go web application, which is the driving primary adapter. Um, so this just does your usual stuff, right? It's like an application, I'm using fiber. But what this does, as you can see here by users.api, this embeds, as you can see by the import, a core service called users, right? And this, this service, this driving adapter, doesn't know anything about any secondary adapters. So it doesn't know anything about databases. Um, it doesn't know, well yeah, it doesn't know anything about any of that stuff, right? So you can see here by like a method here, um, I'm still in the process of actually writing this application, so it's all a bit loose at the moment, but you can see here, this would basically be embedded onto your service and then um, I'm calling create account which is a method in the core application right so uh, this is the secondary adapter so this is a Postgres repository implementation of a port so if we go to ports now we have users uh, we have ports direct as a directory just to make it very clear um, some people couple their like ports with their domains um, what I've just done is try to create a bit of separation from that and just have like a ports directory which has a uh, user repository in it. And then in your core, you essentially have your domains. Um, so I use like domain driven design in the core of my application. And then I just kind of use that to validate requests um, in the service methods, right? So a domain could be like the user domain and these take in a series of object value types. And obviously we just have like a new constructor method here. Um, but what the domains also do is this is this could be like an example of a username domain object value type for the user domain. Um, this does some simple validation, but it could also implement some other rules. I don't know, say you had a rule must be less than 15 chars, right? That kind of thing. You can enforce domain level rules on your data in the domain package, right? And also what you can also do is unit test these, right? So the whole idea of the domain layer is you take primitive types such as a string and then you run it through a constructor like this new username method to turn it into your domain language right so then your service will speak the same language in the core because we don't want um, an adapter then like doing some validation we want that all in the core so we can pass the core around to any other adapter like say i want to change this application to be a cli app I don't want to have to do any validation in the CLI or in the web adapter or in a JSON API. I want it all to be in the core so I can import it from my app. Um, so that leads us on to services. So um, services are what embeds your dependencies. So this is a secondary adapter, essentially. So this is a port into the service here, right? And what I do, um, if I go to if I go to main.go, as you can see, when I actually initialize the app in main.go, I initialize any secondary adapters such as this Postgres repo here and I inject them into the core service. So this service now has 
a dependency in it, although it's not aware of that dependency, right? So all all the service is aware about is these methods here on the repository. And um, as you can see here, it just calls like an add method on there to add a user to a database, right? Um, so we'll go back to main.go real quick. So we're initializing Postgres, which is a, a secondary adapter, um, which is completely swappable. So I could have a uh, I could have a MongoDB implementation of that user port. I could have uh, an MQ Rabbit or whatever Amazon SQS adapter, and I inject them straight into my core service layer. And then my core service layer is then injected into my driving adapter, which in this case is a web um, full stack web application, right? So I also in command here, which is normally where your Go applications start. I also separate the implementations by directory, so you can see web in here is what is injecting like it has its own main.go file so in case i did have like another adapter which was a cli i could then have command slash cli with its own main.go file because that, that might want to use different dependencies right um so yeah so uh, back to the core so the core basically takes in uh what are known as data transfer objects dtos um to keep you know all of the driving adapters completely out of the domain it doesn't need to know about any of the domain stuff all it needs to do is provide a username and populate this request and all the driving adapters need to know about is a response and a field coming back in the response right so you can see here the create account method and I've been doing some refactoring so this is why this is uh, complaining but you can see this create account method it takes in a request I then use my domain new username method to get it to speak the language of the domain at that point it would return an error if they have uh, provided a new username I can then new up a factory aggregate route which would be the user domain and then my repositories so the secondary adapters speak the language of our domain right so I can just pass in a user domain into my repo and I don't care if that's Postgres or anything it's just going to go ahead and it's going to go and create that right so yeah that's that's kind of the gist of it I'll just talk a little bit about testing now so your your services your core application is kind of what you want to to be unit tested right it's, this is again quite opinionated just how I do it but what you could do in your tests the nice thing about having the, these adapters is you could have like an in-memory implementation of a port for your unit tests so rather than actually mocking a rep repository which is fine I, I guess it's fine you could actually spin up something like an in-memory adapter which is just used for your tests so you could have like a SQLite in-memory uh, in repository or you could have like uh, just like maps and go right and you can just make a quick implementation and actually add users to your tests so say you're testing get account or whatever um, I could actually you know spin up a, a dummy repository inject an actual user into it and then I could handle it properly um, with a real implementation rather than a mock so your testing is quite nice um, the only other thing to think about with your testing of your core application is you don't really need to worry about data validation so there's not much point of you actually testing like this this part of the app because the domains are already having the domain like validation already has its own test coverage anyway um, so just to, again very quick overview core is where your core application is so you've got your domain layer you've got your service layer which ties in your repositories you've got your ports which are in my case just repositories which is just one repository and um, very quickly touching on errors I also just return like generic errors from repositories because what you wouldn't want to do is return like a SQL no rows error from an adapter and then leak that into your service layer because then you're suddenly creating a dependency on SQL. So that's why you would define your own errors and then you would use those in your secondary adapters. So like here you would actually return like ports dot or what was it yeah, ports dot error user not found if the user can't be found for example, right? Rather than returning SQL error no rows if that makes sense. Um, cool and then yeah primary adapter is your actual you know CLI application it's your fiber application and if I go to an example um, handler here which takes in its own payloads and then it just literally you know uses the create account request method uh, cast it to that type so it's all completely neutral right it's no domain stuff leaking into this there's no um, dependencies like SQL errors or anything in the primary adapters we've got a complete separation from a web implementation, a Postgres implementation, a core layer, our ports, and then all we're simply doing is injecting it all together in main. So yeah, hopefully this video was handy, and um, hopefully you learned something from it. Um, it's a really cool pattern. Obviously, it's more for your, you know, 
I don't know, you're more, more for your commercial projects that work. I, I, I'm always on the stance of, if you're trying to build a project quickly, you don't need this, right? If you're just trying to ship something quickly, go and hack it together and get it out there and see how it, see how it goes. But if you're trying to build a production-ready service at a corporate company, and where they're going to be changing dependencies left, right, and centre, this structure has worked really well for me. So um, just wanted to make a very quick video on that. Hopefully, it's helped, and I'll see you later on.